All right, today I'm going to show you how to turn an Intel NUC into an HD PC with LibRelic. Let's start by opening a browser and pointing it to the address LibRelic.tv. We need to download the installer from the download section. This installer will then make a bootable USB stick that we're going to use for the installation. I'm, I'm taking the Windows version since I'm running a Windows machine, but uh, you can you can do it on a Mac or a Linux as well. And, and it really doesn't make any difference to the actual LibreLec installation. It, it will be exactly the same regardless of the version you use to create the installer. Okay, so let's open the installer. It's in my downloads and... and uh, when you open the installer, you are faced with a screen like this. I'm going to install a development version of LibreLex, so I'll tick the Show All box here. And for the version, I will choose generic AMD slash Intel, which is a must when installing LibreLex on an Intel NUC. And I'll choose the latest version, 7.90.008. Alright, let's download the software by clicking Download and choosing a folder where to place the software. And when your download is done, you will need to plug in your USB stick or an SD card to the PC you're using. All right, when you plug in, you will see that the, the name of the device appears here. And then you can click Write, which will, will, which will overwrite the contents of the device with the LibreLec installation. All right, so after the writing has been completed, you can safely e eject the USB from your PC, plug it into your NUC, and, and then reboot your NUC. Press F10 to enter the boot menu, and now you can choose the device where you want to boot the system from. You should choose the UFE USB device that corresponds to your USB stick and, and then just wait a while for the installer to actually start. Alright, so as I said I'm, I'm installing an alpha version because uh, there is a brand new version coming just after a couple of weeks and, and and I really wanted to show that instead of the previous previous stable version but of course I'd I'd recommend you to actually install a stable version instead. All right, the installer is up. Let's press enter to install LibreLec. My NUC has a conventional hard drive and an SSD drive, so I'll choose the SSD drive because this is where I want to install LibreLec and, and then yes I really do want to continue. This wipes the contents of the drive you choose here so uh, be careful if you have uh, multiple drives on the system and you want to keep something on the on the on the other drive. Okay it's done. Now unplug the USB stick from your NUC and, and reboot the system. Your system should now boot into LibreLec from the drive that, that you installed it on. And indeed, that's what happens. You're faced now with the welcome screen. Click Next to move on. You can choose a host name for your system. I generally keep the default. Then you can choose a wireless or a wired internet connection to to be used. I'm, I'm using one of the wireless ones. All right, good. Next. And I, I like to enable SSH remote access to my, my node, but it's not really mandatory. I recommend you keep the Samba on in any case. 
All right, and then that's it. We have actually installed LibreLect now and it's it's ready to be used, but I recommend you go to the settings and, and set a few settings to optimal values for, for an Intel NUC. So let's start by going into the system settings. And I always like to enable the expert mode here because uh, in, in the standard mode it will hide some of the settings from you, but we don't really want, want any of that. So let's go through the display settings here. If your NUC is connected to a TV, use limited color range, otherwise disable this. Enable differing. And that's it for the display settings. For audio settings, choose the right audio device. In my case, it's, it's the HDMI device here that I want to use for audio. So I'll choose the third option here. Uh, it's connected to my amp, which has uh, nine channels. So I'll, I'll actually choose here the, the most amount of channels, so 7.1. And I actually want to pass the audio audio stream to the uh, receiver as it is, so I, I allow pass-through here. And it's a DTS capable receiver that I have, so I enable that option as well. All right. I think that's all for the system settings. Yep. All righty, let's look at the interface settings then. Here you could change your skin and that kind of things for the for the layout. But I want to change the region format to Central Europe as that corresponds more to my location. Uh, you could set your time zone, date format, time format, etc., uh, etc. Et over here. All right, let's go to the player settings then. In the video section, you want to enable adjust display refresh rate. This will set the correct refresh rate uh, when you start to watch a movie. If you have pass-through enabled for audio, leave sync playback to display disabled, otherwise enable it. Make sure VDPAU is disabled and VA API is enabled. This is for Intel hardware and make sure that it's being used for all kind of videos. Good. I think we've covered most of the important settings here. Uh, you might want to change the keyboard layout here in the LibreLX settings if you like, or enable automatic updates or stuff like that. But uh, in, in, in general, there are a lot of options uh, that, that you can personalize to your liking and, and it, it will take time to, to f find, find your personal favorites over here. But I, I think we've touched most of the important ones right now, so let's move on. So I mentioned earlier I have a conventional hard drive for my movie collection and a SSD drive for the LibreLex operating system. So let's go add the movies into the database. So I'll choose to add videos and browse to the location. Uh, the location could be on, an, on a NAS, but in this case it's a l on, on a local file system. So uh, under media, I'll, I'll find my second hard drive. I'll give a name for the media source. And finally choose that the directory contains movies. 
When I click OK, it will scan all my movies in the collection into the database of, of Kodi. And I'll find out that my vast movie database contains only a single movie. All right. Let's go do something else. We noticed that we don't have uh, any weather forecast visible here. So let's go to add-ons and choose to download some more add-ons. We install from the Kodi add-on repository a plugin that, that will provide us some, some weather information. It, will act it, it seems it's actually updating some of the existing plugins when I go here. Alright, so let's choose uh, Yahoo Weather under under weather and let's install that plugin. Now we've got Yahoo Weather add-on enabled. So we can go back to set weather provider and choose aha Yahoo Weather is here. And finally we need to choose a location for for our weather forecast. So I'm interested in the forecast of Stockholm. So that's what I choose. And now we see that uh, on the front page we see the current weather and uh, and the forecast for the coming days. Good. That was pretty much all I, I planned to show you today. So. If you're interested in, in reading more, check out knuckblog.net and enjoy Cody.